Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of We Were Ports. Um, thanks for joining us this morning. Now the person that we have on with us this morning doesn't need any introduction whatsoever. Um, Stevie Khan, um, 156 appearances for Portadown, 130 goals, two league titles, an Irish Cup, an Ulster Cup, two Budweiser Cups and a Gold Cup as well. Um, the person that everybody associates with, with that 91 or 1991 season, the double win season. And um, thank you very much, Stevie, for taking the time to join us this morning. We really appreciate it. No, a real pleasure, John. You're looking forward to it. Very good. Stevie, we're going to start, um, if you can tell us a bit about your, your early career. I know that you spent time at Aberdeen, Hibs and, and Mullerwell. So if you want to talk us through your early football career, how you ended up then at those clubs, your experience under Sir Alex Ferguson as well, obviously, at Aberdeen then, just before we, we, we start on to your imported down career. Yeah, sure, Johnny. And um, it's probably a lot of step prior to that. It's actually when I was 13 years old, um, when I was lucky enough to be first introduced to Sir Alex Ferguson. He was a manager of St. Mun at the time. And um, I was asked along by my uncle, who knew him, to go on down and train uh, one night with the rest of the sort of young lads. Um, so I must have done all right. He invited me back uh, a few times after that. And um, I signed for him when I was 13, uh, what we call an S form, um, which tied me to St. Mun, um, which I was there for, for three years. So I'd, already, you know, we didn't know how good uh, Alec Ferguson was going to become. But um, for me, the education started when I was 13. Um, he left to, to, to go to Aberdeen. Um, and then about nine months later, he came back for me and asked me to go up to Aberdeen um, and have a trial game. As you've got to say, I had a nightmare, a total and absolute nightmare of a game. But he must have saw something in me that he thought was, well, I could maybe do something with this boy. And they offered to sign me again. So I was quite lucky, Johnny, there that in the space of three years, I was signed twice by Alec Ferguson. And, um, you know, my time at Aberdeen, you know, it was very similar to Porter Down. I mean, from the red strips to the supporters, to the success we had, you know, we won league titles won Scottish Cups. Uh, I was there for six years uh, there. Um, then I moved on to Hibs. It was one of those things where I was never getting a regular game at Aberdeen, but, you know, to strike out and do my own thing, I had to, sort of, you know, take that jump away from Aberdeen. Moved to Hibs. I was there for three years, which, again, was quite good. Uh, managed to be top scorer in Scotland uh, in one of those years. Uh, we got to a, a final at Hamden as well. Um, played with some, some, some really good players there. From there, I moved three years to Motherwell, and um, again, a decent time there. It was all right. It wasn't the same. You know, the the, the, the caliber of the club wasn't the same as maybe Hibs and clearly Aberdeen was, but I still had a decent time for, for, for that. Uh, and then it was obviously uh, over to Porter Down, which was, as I say, was really, I think, unique in a way that, you know, starting with the red strip at Aberdeen, and almost in finishing the red stuff at Portadown for me was a sort of top and tail to the career. How did the move to Portadown come about? Does the likes of Ronnie approach, obviously approach Motherwell to see if there's anybody available that might want to come in? Obviously you came in then on the back of, of Marty McGee um, receiving a, a long suspension that season. So you came in as a replacement um, for him. What, did Ronnie go specifically after you? Was it a case of Ronnie using his contacts to see who was available, who could he bring in? How did the move come about, Stevie? Yeah, that, that, that was probably it. Johnny, who, there was, who was a midfielder at Motherwell at the time? His name escapes me just now. It was, it was from, it played the Porter Down. Colin O'Neill. Colin O'Neill. How could I forget Colin O'Neill? <laughs> <laughs> so it was, Colin was at Motherwell. Uh, he joined Motherwell when I was there. And that got him great with Colin. And, you know, fair play to the boy. He worked very hard at his, his trade and his profession to, to do well. Um, so it was actually through him and Ronnie. That he reckoned Ronnie had uh, spoken to Colin, asked if there was anybody there. I'd been sort of bombed out by the manager, Tommy McLean. Couldn't get a game. And Colin said to me, look, would you fancy maybe having a chat with Ronnie McFall at Porter Down? And, uh, you know, being someone who wants to play football, I said, yeah, happily have a chat with him. Um, and Ronnie came over uh, to, to Motherwell. I had a meeting with Ronnie, and uh, the next thing I knew, I was, I think, playing my first game for Portadown against Crusaders about a week later. 
Yes, I was looking back sort of um, through some stats and figures here this morning. You made your, your debut up at sea. You think it was it? I think my big crusaders. I think maybe two one. I think Kevin McKeever scored twice. Twice that right. day. Um, what are your what's your first impressions? You know, you're coming you're coming off. You know, the Scottish Premier League at that time, obviously a, a superior league. You know, it's a full time league. Um, you're coming to to the Irish League at that time. What's your first impressions? You get off the plane, you you see Shamrock Park, you see view the players. What's your, your first first thoughts, Stevie? My first thoughts is to win a game of football, Johnny. That that's the first thing with me because I've been from sixteen to you know I was twenty seven and eleven years. I only had one thing in my mind was to win a game of football. So the the, the stadium, the, the 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 park, the facilities, mm. none of that. I, I didn't take any consideration. I was there to score goals and win a game of football. So I know people can look at it and say, well, surely that's not what it's all about. But I, I kept things very simple in my mind that don't try to be something you're not. Don't try to look for things that could try and negatively influence you. I just thought, right, I've heard good things. Ronnie spoke well about the club. Colin spoke well about the club. Let's give it a go. Um, and it's up for me to impress and prove myself to Porter Down, not the other way about. Yeah. Darius Lee wasn't there to impress me. I was there to impress them, to show that, hey, you know, I, I can... Because a lot of people are looking at you, Johnny, thinking he's came from the Premier League, he's think he's, he's Billy Big Time, and we'll sort him out, we'll give him this, we'll do all that kind of stuff. So I knew it was coming, and I thought to myself, well, we'll soon see about that. Um, so I had just in my mind, get on in the game um, at Seaview, um, yeah, you're right, we won 2-1. Uh, Big Kevin scored a, a couple of goals. I think I had a hand in the second one. I had a header down them in the box, I remember. So I'm thinking, decent debut, we won. So that gives you a platform to build on. That's how I viewed it. Mm-hmm. You talk about that initial meeting with, with Ronnie where he comes over to see you. Does Ronnie, is your mind already made up? You want to play football, you don't mind where you go. You don't. Does Ronnie have to sell the club to you in any capacity? How does that initial conversation go? And um, what's your first impressions of Ronnie as well, meeting him? Well, clearly you got to like the person that you're going to be playing for. And I liked Ronnie. You know, I, I found him easygoing, relaxed. And it, it, it didn't complicate things. I've always said that, Johnny. You mean you've done some, some dinners together, as you know, and I, I talk about Ronnie. It keeps things nice and simple. And as a player, you like things nice and simple. And, you know, it was to me where, look, you know you can score goals. I've got players here I think I can put around you that will create opportunities for you. Like of Joey Cunningham and Greg Davidson and Sandy Fraser and all these boys. Mm. Um, and we think you'll get goals with this, and we've got this ambition to go and try and do this and that the next time. So for me, it was quite simple and straightforward. Just want you to come and play, want you to score goals, and away we go. So I thought, well, yeah, I'll, I'll have some of that. Um, I spoke to Gary Peebles about this last last time as well. Um, it's a big life change as such, where you're used to playing in Scotland, you know, you're training locally to where you live, you know, everything sort of, you know, on, not on your doorstep, so to speak, but it's a bit different than having to get flights maybe two or three times a week and um, not training with the squad as well. You know, you're, I took it at that stage that you'd maybe trained, you still trained with Mullerwell at take it, Stevie, and then play, obviously came over for the matches with Porter Down. Does that, first of all, with not training with the squad, does that, it obviously didn't, but is there concerns that, that might affect the match day, you know, when the team has been trained through the week, working on tactics, formations and everything like that. Is there a concern of yours that that, you know, you might struggle to fit in at the beginning because you're not training with the team from day to day? Yeah, good, 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 good point, Johnny. But no, I had no concerns whatsoever. I, say, I, I, I'm, I was very single-minded, as you saw from my time at Port Down. So I, I was just focused on making sure that I, I could contribute to the team. So... I think in my three and a half years with Porter Down, I think I only trained twice with the team in that whole time. Um, but that shows you, you know, in terms of the players that I played with and, and maybe myself, that, you know, for example, I, I, would, I would be, be saying to the likes of Joey and Greg and all that kind of stuff, look, just cross the ball. If I'm not there, my fault. No blaming you. Do not worry. Just you cross the ball. So they then thought, right, we'll get the ball in there. Let's see if you can back up what he says. Clearly, I did, but you know, we're getting the goals that I did. So straight away, you've got that that trust from the rest of the players, thinking, yeah, just put it in the box. To the midfielders, I would say, you want to come and link with me and play one twos, play under my feet. I'll defend the ball for you. I'll bring the team thirty yards, thirty yards up the park. 
that was done as well. And then the third thing, obviously mainly with Sandy, for me was to say to Sandy, look, Sandy, this is what I will do. This is what I'll bring to the team. I know, what, and I, obviously, being a professional player, you can see very quickly, your eyes tell you who can do what and what they can do. And I knew Sandy was good at running into channels, getting be, behind people. So I would say to Sandy, look, you know, look, at the, look for the flick-ons, look for the little give-and-goes, look for me going short and you running into space. So very quickly, Johnny, I, I, I could establish that rapport with certain, com, certain parts of the team and would gel right away. And they trusted me and I trusted them. Um, your first couple of games, was there any players that stood out to you? You think to yourself, he looks good. You know, he's who stuck out to you after those first couple of games? Did you think that he is, you know, this is a top player, this is a, a top squad? You're obviously coming into a squad up, I think probably at the time was sitting top of the league, it was sort of neck and neck with Glen Yeah. Like I say, who stood out for you in those opening few weeks? Joey Cunningham. You know, I've always said that, that um, I don't know why or how, but obviously Joey would tell you, you know, uh, about not being able to come over and play in Scotland or England or whatever, but you know, the pace, the skill, and the bravery. You know, you, people forget, you know, these, these, these skillful players were getting kicked left, right, and centre. Uh, but Joey was as tough as nails, as you know, um, Johnny. So he, he stood out for me as well. And, and I think the, the, you know, Alfie Stewart was another one, you know, in terms of his, his determination and, he, and his grit and his, you know, the way they sort of made sure he, he worked for the back four and kept the back four. Steady, <coughs> excuse me. But it was just, it wasn't just the ability. I think it was just the, the way that I knew the guys were determined to win. They were a professional bunch of people. And I could see very quickly, you know, there was no mucking about. Everything was taken seriously. And what I could bring and add to that, hopefully, would just round things off. Mm-hmm. Um, some names were associated, you know, some names sort of slip under the radar from that season. This name maybe doesn't slip onto the radar, but it's sort of a cult hero or, or a cult following anyway among board and supporters. But Kazoo then would come in towards the end of the season as well, um, from Scottish football, I believe. Does Ronnie tap into your knowledge of Scottish football at that sort of a stage? How um, do you remember Vic coming in? I know he only played a handful of games. Yeah, I do. You know, no, no disrespect to, to Vic, but I didn't think he was a particularly good player or a good addition to the squad. Um, I don't, and you know, without being over critical, Johnny, but you're asking me the question. You know, I felt it was unprofessional. Um, and I think the team carried him to, to a degree. Um, I, I know he had a bit of skill, but uh, for me, um, but listen, managers get judged on their recruitment, some work, some don't work. Uh, yeah, Ronnie would always ask me who's about, who's kicking about, who's, uh, and you would try and you know give them one or two things, but you don't want to get caught up too much in it, because if he sends yeah. someone that's no good, <laughs> it may come and back in land and you go, I was there to play football, Ronnie, you're getting paid to, to get the players, but you would try and keep them keep them right. Um, we talked about, you know, the, the difficulty of, um, you know, not training with a squad on a day-to-day basis. Did you also have any concerns about, you know, I suppose it's maybe, you know, like the family life of your way for, for a couple of days at a time here and there, staying over here and things like that. You know, it's a bit different from, as we're saying, you know, you're at a club in Scotland, you know, you're home most nights in your own, you know, your own surroundings and stuff like that. You didn't have any any concerns, you know, from a family life point of view, of being away for two or three days each week and, and things like that. You settled into that life all okay then? Yeah, you know, if you catch your mind back to my, my six years at Aberdeen, every second week, you were away yeah. overnight because you've been out to Glasgow. You were down to Edinburgh, uh, and that's before you know the motorways and all that were all you know redone. It was three or four hours getting down, so you had to go down every second week and, and still overnight. So you, you were used to that, and you know being your your profession, then that that's you know sometimes that's a sacrifice that has to be done because you only get one shot at having you know a football career, and you've got to take the opportunities with it. So no, it didn't affect me. Looking back, as I said, you came in, you scored seven goals in eight games then, not 89-90 season. A couple of the games along where one that sticks out in the memory for a lot of people is that orange game, the penultimate game of the season. Lose Joey Cunningham, sent off for dissent. Watch, I wasn't at the game, obviously, but you know, watching the highlights, poor down, just knocking on the door, knocking on the door. I think Alan Fattis is in nets for Ards. Hmm. Um, 
he's, I think there's a header from maybe yourself that he saves a point blank range. There's maybe mm-hmm. a Sandy chance, a brand strain chance. It just looks like just it isn't going to happen. Sandy hits a a golden injury time to rapture scenes. What's your memories of that game, Stevie? And it, I'm going to say the celebrates. Obviously, still had to go and win the the last game of the the season, but you know the sense of relief with that goal and meaning that the title was in your own hands going into the, to that last game of the season. What's your memories and thoughts on, on that? Well, yeah, I, I couldn't believe how, how, how hard ours were trying to deny a victory. I don't know if they didn't like put it down or, or run it forward or something, but they were really as if it was a cup final for them, which is strange. You're playing teams that have nothing to play for. You know, I'm not saying they should lie down, you don't get me wrong, but I looked at it as if it was an excellent incentive. So I can remember... The challenges were flying in, and it was very difficult. You mentioned Alan Fess. You know what a game he had. I did have a header. I, you know, I can remember it clearly. And as if it was looping into the top corner, I thought I scored here, and he pulls out a save. Fantastic save. Got to, got to say, you know, um, and we're bashing away, bashing away. But it's one of those ones. I, I never, again, it's that single-minded attitude. Well, until the ref blows the whistle, we're still in this, and we kept going and kept going. But when Sandy hit the winner, um, I can all. Remember, I think the 11 players ran in 11 different directions to celebrate with the Portadown fans who were all around the stadium, jumping up in the fence to the what you know, the member of the wire meshing and all that kind of stuff. And it was a fantastic feeling because then clearly we knew getting into the, the last game, then you know, the destiny is all in our hands. So, yeah, it was a, a, a memorable goal from Sandy. Um, a good pal of yours, Dougie Bell, then comes in for la- those last couple of games of the season as well and makes it makes a big impact. I take it that's Ronnie tapping into your knowledge as well, but with, with Dougie coming in there, um, I think Roy McCready, I think, missed the, the sort of the title run in, so Dougie sort of came in for um, a replacement um, for him. Um, I've heard Dougie described as a Rolls Royce of a player. He'd obviously returned to Portadown later in his career. Mm-hmm. Um, what were your thoughts of you know of Dougie Bell as a player coming into Portadown and things like that? Obviously a big pal of yourself. Yeah, he'd be, be my best pal, Johnny. Um, you know, I've known him since I was 13 year old. But when, when Ronnie asked me about him, I said, you've got to get him. Because um, I'd won league titles, Premier League titles with, with, with Dougie at Aberdeen and played with him at Hibs and all that kind of stuff. So I knew what we were getting. And unfortunately for Roy, you know, who I thought Roy was a, a, a tremendous player. Roy, I think he pulled his hamstring. I think in a game against Ballymena, we won 3 2 up at Ballymena. So Roy was out. And that was a big miss because Roy did the, the as you'll know, Johnny, did the dirty stuff. For us, winning tackles, getting the ball and breaking up play. So we didn't have that. Doogie coming in had that, plus he had the, the, the stuff going forward, the ability you know, to pick out a pass, do one-twos. So I knew right away, I know what we're getting here, and I could fit in with him, he could fit in with me. And I was telling the rest of the boys, look, here's the strengths, what you'll bring. Just just give him the ball and sit back and, 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 and enjoy. And that's what Doogie done. It was a great addition for us. Um. We'll then go on to the 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 final day against Linfield. Um, you were saying there about training. You only trained with the club twice. I, I, I remember I was watching footage back there a couple of couple of weeks ago, and I think it maybe was filmed a day or two before that game against Linfield. Um, I see you you and Dougie training with us training with a squad. I think it, I think the piece I was actually watching was talking about. I think there was maybe a, a, um, some sort of a bomb attack down the Martin Road, possibly that way. Kick Ronnie's house. Suffered a wee bit, and it's sort of focusing on it, and then it goes to show you training and stuff. And um, probably down at Brown's trying to think it was before before the match, um, in the in the week. Do you remember the the build up to the game? And as somebody coming over from you know from Scotland, not from the local area and stuff, did you fully understand and and take on board just how momentous this was going to be for a club like Portadown? What it meant, you know, the whole. The whole feeling amongst the time, you know. Could you give me a bit of um, a bit of your your thoughts on the build up to the the week of the game or the couple of days that, and then um, what your feelings on of everything was? Yeah, um, I think first first thing to say, Johnny, for me would be that once we'd won that game at ours, as you described there. Uh, so you know, I'm thinking, I know Doogie's thinking, a chance to win another league, a chance to win a trophy, a chance to get a medal. That 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 was the sole focus. That, that for me, and because everything else that I'll, I'll describe to you surrounding that all ties into that, because you know that if you can keep focused on that, win that league, that's what it will mean to the club and the, the, the people and all that kind of stuff. So that, 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 
uh, again, I know it might sound a little bit, um, but it was quite simple and straightforward. Just go out and win the game. That was it. Go out, score the goals, win the game. Um, and you, if you keep it in that perspective, and I always said to you, and I was doing coaching later on, don't don't play the occasion, play the game. So me and Doogie were able to get that over to the players. Play the game and you'll be fine. The training was, yeah, normal training session. What I enjoyed, and I think on the Friday morning, um, uh, Jordi Richardson, the great coach, uh, so the great backroom staff manager, you know, who looked after us all superbly, he opened up the, the ground on Friday morning. So we would, we, we would, as a full-time professional, always train on the Friday morning. So me and Doogie, and we got Neely McCulloch in and one or two others, I think Trevor Williams, some of the young boys, and we were doing a little training session on Friday, which it so lightened the, the mood, I think, of a lot of people in the place and all that. So we did, had the training from that. Um, and then obviously coming into the Saturday, so I was aware of the build-up. Read the you know the Port Down Times, and you could read the papers, and people saying you, you know, and obviously loads of well wishers every time you you stepped out the out the hotel or you're in the hotel and stuff like that. Um, but it was the the Saturday for me, uh, Johnny would be getting down to the ground, and I, I thought to myself, I can't believe how many people here. I thought, and I think there was about ten thousand people at the game and I, I remember I remember a band marching up um, towards the stadium, a full band playing and everybody behind them and, and that then I thought to myself, oh yeah, this is a game. This is a, a proper game. Obviously you know you're playing Linfield. And clearly they've got the reputation of, you know, being the sort of big team in Northern Ireland winning all the league. So you knew you weren't going to get an easy game. No matter they couldn't win the league, they were going to try and stop you winning the league because nobody wants a party on your behalf. So that, I remember that the colours and the noise and the sounds, and I thought to myself, this is fantastic. And when we walked out the tunnel towards the game and you look round, and there wasn't a space to be seen around the whole stadium, it was absolutely brilliant. And I just thought, you know, we need to win this game for the people here today. Um, it's easy to forget because of what that team went on to do. But at that stage, maybe, to the best of my knowledge, and maybe sure somebody will correct me, I can only think of Alfie Stewart within that squad. Well, apart from yourself and Dougie, but Alfie Stewart within that squad that possibly had any experience of winning leagues or winning trophies or, or big games. Um, you know, obviously, you know, Mickey and Philip Major and Greg Davison and Brian Strain and so forth, they would go on to win multiple leagues with, with the with the Port yeah. 19. But at that time, they had no experience of that. Did, did you find a lot of those players sort of leaning on the likes of, of yourself and Dougie, um, you know, in the build-up to the game for a bit of, you know, a bit of knowledge, a bit of re- relying on your experience of playing in big games? To, to, to a certain degree, um, to, you know, we, we would tell them, just relax, play your normal game, don't try anything fancy, because we've got to where we are, or you've got to where we are, and we've come in to help you with what you've done well so far, so don't try and be, be changed that, but I think credit to those people you talked about there, uh, Johnny, and you've maybe heard me describe it, the, the sort of dinners we've done together, that um, proper men, absolute proper men, and knew, and didn't have to be told, really didn't have to be told them, okay, for the time we'd all fall out with each other in the dress room at half time or full time and that kind of thing, but these guys didn't have to be told, they knew what they had to do, um, and you know, I, I, I thought they were very professional in the whole um, outlook and how they the, the, the two cousin board, you know, because it's not easy sometimes when you see outsiders coming into a club and this, that and other, but listen, they embraced us brilliantly. They embraced what we were trying to, you know, get across to them. And I thought their professional, professionalism was excellent. Um, you score, you score the first goal, lad, yeah. lad there, isn't it? Um, I know, yeah. <clears throat> you see the header, you see that the crowd pour onto the pitch, you're on your knees in the middle of the pitch. I suppose it's a difficult question. What's going through your head, Stevie? You know, and how does that? I know it, it's hard to compare things. You know, you've won SPL titles and stuff with Aberdeen and trophies and things like that. How does that moment compare to those moments? And do you any recollection of what's going through your head at that moment in time when you score that goal? The moment is just the same. Doesn't matter where what club you're at when you're winning and you're scoring and that the the game that makes a difference. Um, the feeling is just unbelievable, Johnny. I, you know, and I actually can't describe it. I was off. I, I, I had gone. I, I just said, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I've scored. This could be the winning goal. This could be the goal that could win the league title and this, that, and other. 
So, um, and then when all the crowd came on, and thankfully they did, they stopped me. I came on away down the Brownstone Road. <laughs> I was away. Um, so that that was that was a, a, a great feeling. Um, and, you know, as equal to Aberdeen or anywhere I'd played, that was right up there. Fantastic feeling. Um, so, go on, the famous 2-0 victory over Linfield. I think Greg Davison scores. Uh, you hit the post, is it? And Greg hits in the rebound, isn't that right? I must, I must have sat her, yeah. I, I, I should have scored because actually Vic Casule um, had a shot, the goalkeeper saved it, came out to me, and I couldn't quite get my, 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 I can remember it clearly to this day, couldn't get my foot round it, my left foot, hits the post, and Greg knocks in, and Greg will tell you, as he's probably told you, Johnny, he won the league for Porter down that day. <laughs> he's mentioned it once or twice, David. <laughs> um, so... I always like to hear what happens after that game. He's left the trophy, big celebrations. Do you have any stories, memories and stuff from that, that night, possibly that weekend even? I know there was an Irish Cup final to come the week after, so it might be curtailed celebrations to an extent. Um, but what happens after the match? How do you celebrate? What's what's the memories and stories from that, Stevie? I can, I can, for me, it was all just probably about the, the hour after the game, Johnny, and just in the dressing room. You know, when you see people who've been associated with the club for 30, 40, 50 years, mm-hmm. you know, uh, obviously Ronnie being a player at the club, manager, people with long association come in, you know, and, and giving you a big hug and a cuddle and tears in their eyes. Um, th- that, that that stands out for me the first hour. The rest of it was just probably just like a normal, you know, Saturday because once all the adrenaline, you know, dies down, it's, well, that's it, we've won it and we move on. And that's not being disrespectful or, you know, big-headed. It's just that, well, we've done it. We knew we'd done it, but see the first hour to all the people that were in that dressing room that, not the players, but people like Jordi, as I say, Ronnie, Nat, and there's loads of people around there who it meant so much to them, you know, about the gypsy curse and all, all that kind of stuff. Um, that for me stood out and you're getting photographs taken and all the well wishers. The first hour after the game was absolutely magical and then everybody sort of drifts away in their own different way and that was it. Um, we have the Irish Cup final, and I believe that's probably the Saturday following that. Yeah. Bit of a damp squib. We end up losing 3-0 to, to Glen Torn. Is there a thought that the elation of winning the league title sort of takes the eye off the ball of the, the Irish Cup final? Do we get caught up in the winning of that first league title? What's, a, what's your memory to that Irish Cup final, Stevie? No, I don't think so, Johnny. I just think we were beaten with a better team on the day. Mm-hmm. Pure and simple. Um, again, because, you know, you mentioned people, you know, like Brian and Alfie and Greg and Philip and all these boys and, and Mickey and that. They, they, they boys weren't taking it for granted or thinking, well, we've won the league and we'll stroll out here and win the cup. Uh, you know, I think it was nil nil at half time. So we're still, I think we're still in the game. Um, but in the second half, Glen Torum just totally overpowered us. Maybe we're running out of steam a little bit in terms of energy. You know, obviously, the, it does, does take out your degree, but no excuses. Glen Torm with a better team. Deserve to win it. Yeah, you're really disappointed because it's a, a major trophy that you could have won. Um, but, you know, you just have to put your hand up and say, best team won on the day. Now, you were on loan that season. You had come in from Mullerwell on loan. Yeah. Um, you would obviously then join permanently the season after. Does Ronnie start talking to you about a permanent move before even the Linfield game? Is that something that happens... In the summer, how does it, the permanent move come about, Stevie? Yeah, very much like that, Johnny. Just in the summer, so you know, let things die down for two or three weeks. Everybody goes on holidays and that type of thing. I was still under contract uh, to Motherwell. I think I still had another year of my contract at the time. Um, but then Ronnie came back and said, "Look, would you fancy about signing, you know, for a, a, a full season, and coming over and, and being be part of it uh, for good?" Um, didn't take much persuasion. I just had to sort out my contract with Motherwell, uh, which was easily done, and um, agreed terms with, with, with Ronnie and Porter Down, which was easily done as well. So it was no first day. It was just quite simply, yeah, we could win this. Ronnie was talking about us getting better and trying to keep winning. And, and I could see that, you know, once, once, you, once you win the first trophy, you can sense, hey, everybody likes being at the top of the league. Everybody likes being in cup finals. Um, and... So for me, it was a, a really easy decision to, to make. Mm-hmm. Um, Ronnie wouldn't tinker too much with the team that summer. Obviously, you came in permanently. I think he added Paul Doolan, uh, came into the, the squad as well. Yeah. Also, believe maybe Roy McCready's brother Barry came in very, very briefly 
I, I think I don't even know if he if he played maybe played one or two games. It was maybe, maybe I don't remember kind of, it so. <laughs> <laughs> um, we started off. I think well, you know, we obviously had qualified then for the European Cup mm. as um, as league winner, so we drew a plum draw then against against Porto. Um, mm. I think Porto won beat us eight one. I think in that Shamrock and and things. Like, what's your memories of? of playing somebody like Porto, you know, a, a top-class European team at, at that stage. Well, it was brilliant for me because obviously, again, coming from Aberdeen, you know, we'd won the Cup Winners' Cup and we'd, we'd played European games and we'd played, you know, Liverpools and all that kind of stuff. So, for me, I'm thinking, this is great, another European adventure. Um, and I remember the first game because I think we were away from home first. We'd lost four, was it 4 nil. I think we lost 4 nil um, over in... Um, we didn't play in Porto, which was a disappointment. They played down in, I think, the Sestrupal, because Porto were banned from their stadium. But it was a great experience, you know, for, for, for all, the whole club and the boys to beat that level. You're playing the European Cup, a team that had won, I think, the European Cup just a couple of years prior to us playing them. Coming back to the second leg, um, disappointment for me. I think I came off after 15 minutes. I pulled a calf muscle. Um, but, listen, Sandy got his moment of fame. He scored the goal, didn't he? The European Cup goal... Um, and we, we lost heavily, I understand that, but I, I, I think just for the, the, the supporters to see a team that had won the European Cup coming to Shamrock Park, I think that was, you know, reward for them for us winning the league. Another player that probably I mentioned there briefly that falls under the radar, but Paul Doolan came in that season. Um, what were your thoughts on Paul during his time at the club? How did you feel he fitted into the squad and what, and what did he bring to the, to the squad? Great professional. Paul Doolan, because um, I correct me if I'm wrong, Johnny, I think he'd won a double treble or something when he was down uh, playing in the Republic, um, when he was down there, I don't know, was it Shamrock or St. Pat's, I can't remember who he was playing with, but anyway, he, he, he was a serial winner, so right away I'm thinking, well, this guy knows what to do, he was so professional, uh, very humble guy, you know, Paul, um, but what, what for me, the, what Paul brought to the team was he kept the ball moving. So he's in that middle of that area where you can't afford, you know, if you're making runs and you're doing this and that and other, you can't afford the ball to be going static or going back the way. So Paul would keep the ball moving. And then also the bit of dig about him, Paul could get in about people. So I thought Paul was a terrific player for us. Mm-hmm. Um, that nineteen ninety one season is probably an obviously iconic season, probably something that none of us maybe will see for, for a long time, if at all, again. You know, we'll win the Ulster Cup, we'll win um, the Budweiser Cup. I think it's Porter Down and Glen Avon and most of the nearly all of the cup finals that you know um that season. I think possibly yeah. bar the League Cup final. Um we get the better of Glen Avon obviously in the Ulster Cup and um in the Budweiser Cup. I think they get the better of us possibly in the um, the Gold Cup, I think they left that season. Yeah. Remember you scoring a great goal down at Windsor. Um yeah. possibly the same game Greg scored a, a maybe a wind assisted corner as yeah. well. Um do you think that you know the mentality players have won that league title? They've got that experience. They probably believe more in themselves now. You know, what's your thoughts on that that season? Stevie was just steamrolling, not steamrolling, but win after win after win, winning trophies and everything. Uh, are you aware that at the time that you know what that, how good this team is, and you know the the um, the times that you're experiencing at the club at that time? Yeah, well, well quite simply and, and quite. Easily put for me, Johnny is expected to win every game, expected to win every trophy. Me personally, and I know the guys did as well. Um, because as I said earlier on, when you get a taste of that winning that first title and the crowds and the celebrations, and people you're up there and you're thinking, I want to be part of that, I want to be all, all the time compete for trophies. And the, the people I mentioned, and not just the people I mentioned, people I've not maybe mentioned, like David Mills and Kevin McKeever and all these sort of boys, and obviously you mentioned Marty and that. But, they were, to me, they were all winners. They really had a great winning mentality and didn't like getting beat. Uh, you know, as I say, we, we, we had a few goals at each other all, all over the season, but that's what you got to do. So when we get to, you know, I, to not to get to a final, I, I, I always thought it was an embarrassment because I think we're that good, we should be there. And I think then that the team, you talked about that season, the team peaked. That, that was the team maturing maybe for what Ronnie put together over a couple of seasons, you know, bringing mm-hmm. in the players like Alfie and all that kind of stuff from Glentoran. And then adding myself and, you know, Doolin and, and people like that. So that, that team was so mature and ready to go. And to lose two of the finals, which we did, I think we lost your right to go out a couple of times. 
you know, we won four trophies, but I'm thinking, why did we not win six? Yeah. I'm yeah, thinking, I can't understand why we're going to be here, but clearly, what well, happens is you can't, you can't win everything and you can't perform all the time. So I knew the team was really good and we would be, we, we were hard to beat. And I always said, again, I'll go back to, you know, when the dinners we, we've done, Johnny, that um, if a team wanted to play football against us, we'll play football. But see if a team wanted to fight us, we'll fight you. We, we had a team of guys who would not take a step back the way. I know. Um, I think we would wrap up the league quite early. That we'll, I think we wrapped up the, we won the league at, at Crusaders at Seaview. And then I think yeah. we'd maybe another four or five then games Weeks. to go. Yeah. I think we got presented with a trophy the next month, possibly next Saturday at home to Lauren, which was a rare defeat. I think Lauren beat us, beat us 1-0. That's right. <laughs> um, another Scottish player that comes in then for those last few games, Stuart Rafferty. Um, is that a game through yourself, Steve? Is that Ronnie tapping into your knowledge of Scottish football? Um, or is that just Ronnie using his contacts as Scotland? What were your thoughts of, of Stuart Rafferty's four or five games? He's still somebody that is mentioned quite often about how great of a player he was, even in those four or five games. Yeah, no, that, that was all credit to Ronnie. I, I didn't uh, uh, know Stuart. I knew of him. I played yeah. with Dundee and I played against him and all that kind of stuff. Um, but again, I knew when he was coming, I thought, Premier League player, been around for a few years. This can't be not anything other than a good thing. And Ralph was to, to, to prove that, you know, that four or five games, he just settled into midfield. Again, you know, a bit of an enforcer to tackle, but also uh, in the cup final, can put in a great cross uh, as well uh, for, for, for myself to, to get on the end of. So Ralph was a great professional. And again, just when you need that little bit of reinforcement in the, the team, just to keep everybody's standards high and so there's no slipping and nobody getting careless, uh, it was a, a great signing by Ronnie. Then we'll go to the 91 Ash Cup final. It's possibly up, the, it's nearly, you know, it's probably neck and neck with some supporters between that first title in, in 90 and that Irish Cup final in 91. You know, um, two provincial teams poured down against Glen Avon. Everybody talks about it was a scorching sunny day. Windsor are packed to the rafters, a sea of red and a red and blue. Can you talk us through, Stevie, your memories and the lead up to this Cup final? I am um, Cup final morning. What's, what's the process? How do you prepare and things like that? Yeah, um, well, come over the Thursday, we trained, you know, one of the few times I said I trained with the team. Um, don't think we trained on the Friday morning uh, this time. Uh, Saturday morning was, you know, just your normal get up, get your breakfast, uh, and then we'd have a pre-match meal at the Seagull. Everybody had come up there. Um, and I can honestly say, uh, Johnny, I felt we were going to win the game. No doubt, doubt hesitation whatsoever. Um, I think we had a good record against Glenavon. I had a personally good record against them as well. So I'm thinking, we, we've got a real good chance here. But you can't be complacent because a cup final, anything can happen. Um, I remember going down in the bus um, and all the cars that were passing, putting their horns, the red flags and the blue flags, you know, because clearly everybody's more or less coming from the same part of the country uh, down, down to Windsor Park. And um, But after that, it was just... Uh, you just get into the mode, right? We're here to win a game of football. You win the game, you win the cup. Um, but the thing that struck me coming out um, prior to the game was just the sea of red. You know, right, I think it was up that side and round there, was unbelievable. And then you had the blue with Glenavon, to be fair to them, they had a big support down as well. Uh, and, the, and the clash of the colours and, you know, the green surface and all that. And very, very vivid in my mind about wow, this, this, this is, what, what an atmosphere, what a noise, what a sound. Um, so for me, it was, a, a, you know, again, one of those career-defining moments when you can remember, you know, I was talking about the smell and the feel and, you know, the colours, and it was, it was great. And the, the support of down support always have been, but that particular day were immense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how does it feel, you know, when that final whistle goes, you've scored the two goals, you've... As if you hadn't asked your name in the, the history of Portadown already with that goal in the, the last game of the season, what's going through your mind at the, at the final whistle? Talk us through the memories that you have of after the final whistle, you know, um, what happens, how do you celebrate, everything like that, Stevie? Exhaustion was the first thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I personally was exhausted because it was that, that hot summer's days you mentioned there, Johnny, and clearly... You know, you've, you've just played 90 minutes on the back of a, a season where you've maybe played 62, 63 games. Um, so I, I, I was exhausted. It was just relief. Um, there's no 
I, I'm going to speak for myself. There's no over. You're not going wild and you know, jumping down. But I remember hugging, you know, obviously the, the, the coaching staff and and then going over to the fans and then they start, you know, singing the the Scottish songs and I remember doing a wee jig, you know, the, for what for what the jig that I could do, Johnny, at the time there. Um, but I tell you, there was a dis- the disappointing thing for me that day was the presentation of the trophy. We had to go back underneath the stand, mm-hmm. and if you if you look at it, Brian Swain gets his trophy almost on his own because the rest of us are actually under the stand. We were leaning against the wall, waiting to go and get our medal. So when Brian was given and the crowd were going bananas, there was another nine guys, ten guys underneath the stand. We never saw that. Never thought about that before. You, you, once you, you know, now you mention it, you, you are right. You see Brian lifting the trophy, and there's not another Porter Down player to be seen. <laughs> it's sort of, you know, that moment used to sort of rob to an extent of that moment of the, the no, jubilation not, of lifting the trophy. Not robbed. No, no I, I, don't, I don't feel that at all. You know, um, good luck to Brian. There's only room for one person. Brian's yeah. the captain. He has to go and get the trophy. But in later years, when I would go over to see other cup finals that Porter Down were in, the trophy was given out in the park, you know, with yeah. the boards and the. The, the, the ticker tape and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I felt that was a wee bit, you know, we went up, shook some design, got your medal. Yeah. And then, then you came out to the, obviously the, the, the park to celebrate with the fans. Um, but listen, it was fantastic. You know, and even even today, I can still see this, that just a bank of red. That's all you've seen. And, and everybody was so happy, but clearly we, we'd done another little bit of history again. Mm-hmm. Um, going back to then as well, you know, we had the, the open top bus parade saying we had that in 89-90. I remember watching videos of it. Ported Iron Time Centre absolutely packed the same with this. What are your memories of, of those bus parades and, and celebrating the, the trophies with the supporters? I, I, feel, I always feel for the supporters at bus parades, Johnny, because the bus goes past them and that's their 30 seconds is over. You know, but, the, you know, for, for them to come out the way they did in those two years, uh, and line the streets all the way to the stadium. You know, it, it's phenomenal. And very few players get a chance to do that. So we've we done it at Aberdeen because when you're a one club, you know, city or town, yeah. you couldn't do it um, when, when it was uh, obviously at Hibs, couldn't do it in Motherwell either. But to get to do that, that is a, a unique experience. And, you know, I, I thought it was fantastic. You know, when you're up in the bus and you, you just see the joy, you know, there was women, children, you know, men, older people, you know, boys, girls, doesn't matter what it was, they were so proud of the team. And, you know, clearly, not just from a football point of view, as you'll understand better than me, Johnny, being, you know, a, a Porter Down supporter, it lifts the, the town up in the profile within the area, within the country, you know, and, and does it create opportunities? I don't know. But, yeah, it was, it was two, two things that you'll never forget uh, that you won't get a chance to do very often. One of the things, I remember talking to somebody about this or something, one of the bus players, I think you maybe had to nip off the bus to- and ask somebody to use their toilet for for um, a few minutes, and the person then had a sign outside their house saying, "Steve, you can't use this toilet." I think it, it's dead there for for the weekend for, for the week. I always remember hearing that story. Um, yeah. We had you only signed a contract for that one season, Stevie. Did you then have to you and Ronnie speak during the summer again, or had you signed on for a couple of, of years then? No, it was just every year. Every, just so every year, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. So I take it there was it was just the same conversation then, and that pre and that summer of ninety one, ninety two, just we we'll go again. Everybody's happy. It's it's um, yeah, the very, very, very simple, Johnny. I had no problems with my contracts. You know, with Ronnie and Porter down, it was here's offer, Steve. We'd like you to come across again. Da 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 da. Yeah, I, I, it was very easy for me to sign my you know, my loan and my sort of three individual yearly contracts, no problems at all. The 91-92 season will be a bit disappointing, although when you look back at the season before, it was always going to be hard to live up to it. Mm. Um, we would end up, I think, maybe empty-handed. Don't think any major trophies came our way that yeah. season. Um, I sort of look back at that, and for the 89-90 season, the 1991 season, you could have named the Porter Down team most, you know, 1-11 to named itself. That season, um, it seems to be, you know, well, Joey Cunningham missed that whole season. Um, Ian Carlos breaks his leg first mm-hmm. few weeks against Carrick. The team is very, you know, looking back at the teams, you know, it's it's a bit disjointed, you know. It could be different teams nearly every week that season. I, I was out for three months as well. I yeah. had the operation. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Ronnie dips into the transfer market again that summer. He brings in Martin Russell arrives that summer. Um, he also brings in Philip Mitchell um, as well that summer, who's come home from Ipswich. Um, Philip doesn't really doesn't really make an impact at the club and sort of departs in just after Christmas time for a distillery. But Martin Russell is somebody who makes a, a massive impact at the club. Um, is rightly lauded as probably one of the best midfield players Porter Dine has, has ever had. Um, what are your memories of Martin during his time at the club? I suppose he's one of those players that could have put the ball in sixpence for you. Great left foot. You know, absolutely. From set pieces, um, from me, Johnny, that's where... And, and Martin, Martin was a clever, clever player as well. You don't have to tell him something once, and that, that would, be, it would be put in play. And particularly when I knew uh, Martin had such a great left foot. So we would work out a free kick piece where I would say to him, look, you hold the ball, watch me walk in, put the ball down, take two steps back and deliver. I knew he was going to do that. Well, he's doing that. I know he's watching me. So let's say I was against um, Big Davy Jeffries, for example. I always like to use Big Davy as an example. Love playing against Davy. So he would watch me. I would push him away. And he wouldn't try and hit me. I would also hit the space in front of me, three or four yards. And the amount of times we scored goals from that, and I'm thinking to myself, that's great. Clever player, but not just that he could take the instruction, Johnny. He could deliver it. You know, so you know, his left foot for me was, was, was great. And again, a very humble guy, you know, down the earth guy, uh, cause, didn't cause any, any trouble anywhere. But yeah, a, a really talented footballer. Martin sort of comes in and we lose Roy McCready. He then leaves the club that summer. He goes on to be player manager of um, Oma Town. As I said, there was a couple, Ronnie dipped into the, the loan market a, big, a great deal that season. Supposed, supposed with injuries, like you were saying, you're right for three months, he loses. Ian Carlos never kicks a ball for Porter down again after that leg break. He loses Joey for Joey's out, misses that season, misses half of the next season as well. Some of the names, again, no players that sort of slip under the radar, but low market. I look at he brought in Davy Sinclair. Is some poor down supporters again still of that of that vintage still talk about? Again, I think Davy came in on loan from Wraith. I think he maybe only played yeah. four or five games, but he made a big impact in those four or five games. I remember Remember at the time, me personally, I was only a young kid at the time, being devastated when I think he got called called back by Wraith. What are your memories? Or do you have any memories of Davy during that time? Yeah, at the club? Uh, memories of Davy is hard as nails, honestly. Uh, when you know when a guy gets a tattoo inside his gum, he's hard. <laughs> he's not to be. Uh, I, I think we were all a bit in uh, awe of Davy as well. Um, but just a you know a tough tackling midfielder didn't last too long. Really nice guy, um, but somebody that, yeah, somebody you wouldn't mess about with. Yeah, I'm just looking that, you know, there was a big turnover of players. A lot of, a lot of, well, quite a few Scotchmen came in that season. Paul Kinnard came in for a brief loan spirit, I think, from Scotland. Um, Tommy Coyle as well is another one that came in on loan. These guys only maybe played three or four games. Yeah. And then I think Duncan Campbell is another one that comes in for the for the yeah. last um, running of the season. Do you have any memories of, of, of those players are all very fleeting now in their in their appearances. Yeah, I can remember them coming, but this is where the, the the problem you know probably started to arise that um, because maybe myself and Sandy and Doogie you know come in and done really well at the club. Then does Ronnie or others think there's a whole bank of them over there? Yeah. Well, no, that's not the case. Um, not 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 so much ability wise, Johnny, but back to what I said at the start here, attitude. Mm-hmm. It's all about attitude. It's how you just grasp the opportunity. And some of these boys you mentioned they maybe come in and thought, this is too easy. Or, to be fair, it was a very physical league. You were against guys, you know, back in the day when there was no protection for strikers for me, for example. And you knew what was coming, but you thought, well, that's what's coming. But I'm going to dish it out as well. They're going to get a bit of that. Um, so I think um, there was a lot of people come in just clearly weren't of the right fit for the club. Mm-hmm. Do you put down that disappointing season to the the injuries and the quite a lot of turnover of players, or had had a bit of complacency slipped in two league titles back to back every cup final of the season prior? Is it or is it just sort of the squad just needed a bit of an overhaul? It had sort of needed a few fresh faces in it. Well, I think as I said, yeah, I think the ninety ninety one season the, the team peaked. Yeah, that, that was the. You know, the pinnacle of, of what had been built. See, people need to remember what Ronnie had been building. Prior to that, you know, bringing in players over two or three years and then 
adding to it with likes of myself. So it peaked in. But yeah, I mean, to lose Joey Cunningham for a year, that, that's, that's going to cost you 20, 20 goals for the striker and maybe 15 from Joey. Um, I, I was told, you know, as I was three months out, I was told to, to quit playing when I was I had that operation at the Porter Down. I'd already been told when I was 19 to quit playing. I'd been told again at 28 when I was at Portland to quit playing. So, you know, I think I only scored 28 goals. I've said only 28, it's still a, a decent return. Yeah. But if I'm maybe fully fit and Joey's fully fit, I could be, you know, in the 40s again. And does that win you the league? Does that get you a cup final? Um, you know, other people departing. So, yeah, I, I think the, the team then was on that sort of stage when it had to be re- rebuilt and running unit. Yeah. Um, we'll move on then to the, the following season, the your your final season at the club again. Ronnie dips into the transfer market that season, and um, he brings in Tony Gorman. I think comes in. Yeah. Um, he's added Peter Murray the season before, sort of halfway through the season. Uh, you know, as well. Um, uh, another season where it promises a lot. We do we end up with in the Budweiser Cup. I think again a victory over Balamina. Um, we beat Cliftonville. I think to win the yeah. the yeah. um uh, uh, the Gold Cup. Um, yeah. As well, well, ultimately falls short um, in the league. But we think it's sort of where there are thereabouts. I think the yeah. nail in the coffin comes up a Bally scare, possibly the, the penultimate game in that season. I think the still we beat us 3 0. That's right. Um, what's your memories of that season, Stevie? Um, I think personally for me it was good. I think I think I scored 47 goals. Yeah, that's season. what I was going to say. It was a real <laughs> prolific season for you. Um, I was speaking to the the club historian Trevor Clydesdale will give me some facts. I think, yep, 47 goals in 58 games that season. Some yeah. record. Yeah, so from a personal point of view, um, I think, well, I've contributed. I, I can't do much more mm-hmm. uh, than, than what I've done there. Um, and w- w- when you lose, you lose as a team, Johnny. You know, so you know, I'm part of a team. I'm only contributing at my end. And if that happens, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And other parts fell down, but I think you mentioned no disrespect to you know to Peter and to Tony, but they're not the same as as Paul Doolan and Marty Russell, in my opinion. Um, and you know, and I say no disrespect to the boys. You know, they're decent players in their own right, but they're not of that caliber. And Dougie Bell and people like that. Yeah, Dougie um, Bell obviously comes back that season. Then he plays a, the, the he's there for the season. Yeah, and but I think he missed a few games as well. Yeah, uh, with injury. Um, I think he got a bad concussion one game and. And it just just wasn't just you know a couple of trophies. I think did we lose? Did we did Glentorn beat us in the cup that year at, at Shamrock? Yes, and I think Glentorn beat us. We drew nil nil with them down at the Oval, and then I think uh-huh. they beat us one nil one nil Shamrock in the in the replay of that season. Yeah, you know, and it's not it's not an embarrassment to beat the Glentorn mm. in a cup game. But you know they've got a fantastic record, and you're right in the league. We're there to lend the the, the the distillery day. You know, we were down there and Chris quite simply didn't perform. I missed a penalty. So that started off the, the com- complete shocker that we had that day. Uh, and it just wasn't to be. But mm-hmm. I, I think, if, you know, if you look at it, you know, we've we been first, first, then there was a second. You know, so out of four years or yeah. four seasons, uh, it's not a bad return. It's certainly not. A start. You sort of fall into that trap of comparing everything to an iconic season where you know like it's a, it's, a, it's a one-off season to yeah. you're not going to repeat that every season there's obviously going to be going to be changes and things like that um as i say that would then turn out to be your final final season at the club have you any inkling whatsoever you know you've hit 47 47 goals in 58 games mm-hmm. you don't expect them to be to be told that um that you're going to be leaving the club how does that Happen, Stevie? Is there a chat? Do you know prior to the end of the season, or or what's the story no. there? No, I didn't know. Um, I had no chat with Ronnie. As we'd never known, we've had a chat with Ronnie back over in Scotland. Uh, you know, I'm sitting in the office one day and gets a call. It's Ronnie, uh, and quite simply st- saying, "Steve, we're not going to offer you a contract for the next season." Simple as that. Were you shocked? Had you yeah. thought, yeah? Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm thinking, okay. Um, I said, that's okay. I said, so, well, so you'll be freeing me then? Now, this is pre Bosman, mm-hmm. so the answer's no, <laughs> um, unless you return to Scotland, because Linfield were wanting to buy me. Linfield were wanting to take me. Um, and Because I know that their manager had been up watching me a couple of times and there'd been sort of some chat in the background. Maybe Ronnie had been aware of that and clearly didn't want somebody to score 47 goals 
to be going playing with Linfield or uh, Glentoran or, or any of those things. So I, I, I was sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place then. But pre-Bosman, the club held your registration, so I couldn't do nothing. Mm-hmm. So they went and going to offer me a contract. But regardless of whether I'd have signed it or not, they weren't offering me a contract. So I was stuck. They had me. You were sort of stuck in limbo then, unless you, you, know, you went <laughs> yeah. back to Scotland. Unless I went back to Scotland. I suppose you had that, you know, you had a right to be sort of angry, but even a wee bit better at the way that that ends up. If you had 47 goals, 58 games, Ronnie tells you he's not going to keep you on, but stops you then, so sort of trying to, end to dictate to you where you can end up. Was you would that have described how you were feeling, Stevie? Were no. you a bit angry, a bit better? No. No. Two, th- two things, about Johnny. First of all, you knew that was the rules then. Yeah. Nothing you can, nothing you can do about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd been threatened with that at Aberdeen before as well, and so you knew that you know Ferguson, Alec Ferguson would do that. So it's not unusual for a club to do that. So, um, but and angry, no, because you know I'm, I, I did look back at it then. I look back now, you know, three and a half years, it's a long time at a club. Um, you know, I, I was six years at Aberdeen, which was exceptional because that just was an exceptional time, exceptional people, and all that kind of stuff. But I'm thinking three, three, four years. Maybe it's time to move on. I was getting to the end of my career anyway. Was I thinking was the travelling, you know, starting to get to me a little bit as well. And I need to concentrate on what my what I'm doing after I finish playing football. Because clearly my legs have been told twice to to give up. So clearly my knees, you know, had problems. Um so no, I, I wasn't um angry or disillusioned. It's just a case of well, that's what it is. And if I need to, you know, move on, I need to to um bend to the rule that, that's there. Mm-hmm. It would be remiss of me to go through this interview without talking about your strike partnership with Sandy. Um, you struck up a great rapport, obviously both from Scotland, you know. I know Ronnie, or sorry, Sandy would then later sort of live here, but he was travelling over with you at a period of time then. Yeah. Um, these were a great partnership. What's your thoughts on Sandy and, and how did he make you tick on the pitch? Uh, well, I think, first of all, great finisher. You know, Sandy, Sandy was a really good finisher. Um, I think he'd scored over 100 goals as well for the club, Johnny, if, I, if I'm right. Um, you know, to do that, I think, special. Um, but, I, 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 you know, Sandy, I think he was needing someone like me to come in and just say, look, this is what I can do. This is what we can do together. If you just play around me and the flick-ons and the little in-the-box and all that, you'll score a ton of goals. It will also release me as well because you'll be able to drag defenders away and open up space for me to move into so he, he took it on board very quickly, Johnny, and then um, uh, he was a great listener. He wanted to learn, and he knew that, I think he probably knew himself that, you know, he didn't maybe do himself justice at Celtic, that the club that he, he'd signed for, uh, and that he was in a, a position now where he could carve out a very good career over in Northern Ireland, maybe even go back over the water again. Um, and, and he's just a great guy, a real laid-back, um, as you'll know, a very laid-back sense of humour and, um, but a good, good finisher and a perfect foil for me. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your, you know, we talk about the Irish Cup final, Steve, we talk about that title winning day against Linfield, the, the big European Cup games and stuff. Do you have any other memories that really stick in your head? Things that maybe slipped under the radar, moments, games that maybe we don't talk about that often? Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's, you know, I can remember in that first season when we touched on it, when we beat Palomina 3-2. Up at Palomina, and Sandy, it um, took it takes a corner, the ball bounces back to him around about the junction of the 18 yard box, and I'm shouting for him to cross the ball, and he hits it, and I was about to give him absolute pelters, and it takes about 18 bounces and goes through the keeper's legs, and you're thinking, is somebody smiling down on us? Have we got a chance here to to do something? Talking about Sandy again, I, I, I'm sure I've shared this with you on a cup final day, and a lot of people might not know this that. Sandy phoned me up in cup final morning. He says, Stevie, he says, um, I said, what's it, Sandy? He says, I can't walk. I said, sorry. He says, Steve, you need to come to the room. I can't move. So I toddles along. I got a key, gets in, and Sandy's on his bed in cup final day. Totally can hardly walk. So what we did was we, um, Oliver Michael Tammy, uh, an ex-Glenavon uh, director, great man, who was a chiropractor. So we phoned him up. This is cup final morning. Ronnie never knew, nobody knew that one of our star players is struggling. And um, he said, look, Ronnie, uh, 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 Ollie, we know you're a Glenavon man, but would you have a look at Sandy here? Went down to his house, got a taxi down, onto the bed, 
Uh, Ollie spent about half an hour, 45 minutes, getting his neck and his back and all that. And, and that was the only way that Sandy played in that cup final because of a Glenavon director. <laughs> um, we talk now, Stevie. Um, how would you like the Portland fans to remember you? I know that you're asked, and now you went into the Hall of Fame along with, with Sandy and Joey there a couple of years ago. How would you like to be remembered? You know, at Portadown Football Club. Um, I think quite simply, Johnny, just someone who came over and embraced the club, the town, the supporters, as you know, including yourself, many great friends that I made over in Portadown, um, who helped you in so many different ways, encouragement, and you know, to do things for you and. I just yeah, like to remember this, you know, a, a really good friend of Portadown Football Club who embraced what they were all about, embraced the challenge that was there, and you know managed to contribute a lot back to the history. So that that would do for me. Do you want to tell um, the viewers, Stevie, what you're doing nowadays, what you're up to? Yeah, um, I, I've been in financial services now for the last sort of, 33 years, and um, so obviously playing football part time in Portadown and, and, and doing that. Got my own um, business. Uh, uh, within the financial services, so that's what I do. Um, it's been it's been as good as football, I think. You know, because you meet so many different people, you're dealing with people, you're, you're trying to provide solutions for people. Uh, also, as well, uh, working a Saturday, I've been very privileged for the last 18 years. Every Saturday, so I work with um, uh, it's called the Big Saturday Football Show, fourth one, Radio Fourth, over in Scotland. So I get to a game. Even now, I'm lucky. I was at Tincastle yesterday watching Hearts. Uh, that's his way through. So every Saturday, Johnny, I still get to a game, which is good. So I'm still on the radio, still associated with football. I think that's that 41 years that I've been sort of in the game. So I'm really blessed and privileged that I still get the opportunity to be involved in football. Well, Stevie, I'm not going to keep you any longer. I just want to thank you very much for giving up your Sunday morning um, to talk to us today. Um, I'm sure everybody will appreciate your memories on a on our interview this morning, Stevie. So thank you very much on, on Tech Car, okay? Yeah, it's been a great pleasure, Johnny, and uh, I've loved talking about the Mendes too, so thank you very much. Cheers.